Hello everybody, I'm James and welcome back to my hobby channel. So I'm going to continue with my discussion of this recent kit build. This is the House of Balsa 1 half A size chipmunk. And today I'm going to talk about the construction of the fuselage. Alright, well before I talk about the fuselage, I do want to talk about the size of the airplane itself. So this is a 1 half A size. I know I've mentioned it a bunch of times. 1 half A refers to the engine size, which is a 049 to an 051. It is not a scale. Um, this airplane has a 36 inch wingspan and when I divide that into the size of the original airplane, which had a 34 foot wingspan, so basically 3 feet divided into 34 feet, I come up with about a 1 to 11 scale size airplane. Um, I did some other measurements and I got anywhere from a 1, I think a 1 tenth to a 1 twelfth, but on average it comes in at about a 1 to 11 scale. So that's the size of the airplane. Alright, so I also want to talk about the um, scale categories um, quickly um, before we get to the, the fuselage. So this is a um, standoff scale, which you can see there. And then there's two other categories. There's the semi-scale and then there's the true scale. So true scale um, sounds, you know, pretty straightforward. It basically looks very close to the prototypical plane. And it's the, um, those planes are typically are um, probably harder to fly. Um, because of that, because small planes don't fly like the big ones. So um, true scale, they look like the um, true plane, but they're a little bit more challenging to fly in, you know, in general. I'm not saying that for every single plane that's out there. So then there's the semi-scale or sport scale. So the semi-scale is one in which the manufacturers, you know, the plane looks like a true scale, looks close to it, but they've done some modifications to make the plane um, fly better. Um, they, maybe they changed the, 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 you know, the wingspan or something like that to make it um, more flyable than um, if you had like a true scale airplane. And then um, there's the standoff scale. And standoff scale is um, for planes, if you're judging a plane or if you're at a, um, if, if a judge is looking at a plane in a competition from I think a distance of, you know, I think 10 or 15 feet, some, some standoff distance, when they look at the plane, they look at it from that distance and say, okay, that looks pretty good for a chipmunk, you know, in this example. Now, if you get close to it, obviously when you get up close, you see that there are features of it that make it, you know, not a scale airplane. And some examples of that, I'm gonna put this down. Some examples of that for this plane is just you know real quick you know for example the the size of the plane are you know straight up and down you know there's not a it doesn't have an oval shape like the true uh, fuselage does on the chipmunk you know here's the bottom of it square squared off so things like that you know from a distance it looks okay um, from that standoff distance but up close obviously it's not a scale version of the airplane so all right let's talk about the fuselage. All right, I'm going to show some pictures of the um, actual build, but first I just want to go quickly over the, um, the construction of the fuselage. So it's pretty simple. It just uses um, balsa sheeting. Um, up in the front, the balsa sheet is reinforced with a plywood sheet. And then in the cowl area, um, you build that up by putting, um, um, you, you triple up and you do these other um, sheets of balsa that you uh, sandwich together. And then in the end, you sand everything down. Um, the upper part here is a um, this, this is a solid block of balsa, and we also have one of those on the bottom. Now the, um, the 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 cockpit and the turtle deck back here are one piece, um, and then it's basically all plastic, or not basically it is plastic, and it goes from this area all the way to closely to the tail tail back here. This little piece up here is not part of the rudder. Um, or the um, vertical fin. It's actually um, scale. It's a scale feature. It is the rail that the canopy would slide back on top of. So if you look at pictures of a chipmunk, you will see this little rail back there. So that's that's pretty cool. All right. See me if I see if I can turn this thing over. Look at the bottom. Oh, there we go. That was nice. Crash it before I fly it. Um, <clears throat> So on the front end, there's another um, balsa block that had to be sanded down, and it goes actually all the way over to, to here. And then you have to just kind of cut cut the groove in it and form it to make it look like a cowl. And then in the, toward the back again, it's just a solid piece of um, uh, balsa there. So not a lot going on. Pretty simple construction. But... All right, so here's the engine compartment or the cowl area. 
and this block you know obviously goes on top of it here and I'll pull that off so we can take a look look inside so the big thing to do here was because this engine is bigger than the 049 you had to put the firewall back I think about a half inch or so and then this little assembly here um, which is the um, basically is the nut for the for the bolt that holds on the lower part of the cowl or this this block so when you look at the plans um, here it is here's the firewall and here's this um, blind nut assembly and you just try to bring that back um, about half inch or so not a big deal I just had to cut another piece of plywood so that it would um, for the new firewall one thing that was a little challenging was when you look at the from the top end here you see that they use this ply or the balsa um, doublers or these these balsa sheets um, so you'd, you'd sandwich them to form you know basically a, a bigger block and then of course you'd sand them down to get the shape well what happened was as I was trying to get the, the engine in, the sidewall started to thin out. And I was losing, this was getting really thin in here because I was taking this out um, just to try to get the engine to fit in here. So as I was trying to get the fit, this was getting really thin. So I just added another sheet of um, balsa on the outside and that thickened up the cowl in that area and gave it a little bit more strength. So um, that's it, I'll show some photos of this and uh, I don't think I have anything else to say about that. Um, again, this and then this is the like I said, this is the the block that you just had to fit and shape. Um, I made room for the for the needle valve on this side, um, and also in the block itself, I made a little room for a needle valve on that side. And then on the other side, we have the, the room for the I had to make room for the oops, make room for the muffler, and then for the vent or from the pressure coming off the muffler I just cut and shaped it so that I could take this take the um, the the line in and connect it that way so it's kind of a pain in the neck it goes goes through there through that hole and then you put the cow to put the, the bottom block on and then screw it all on and then connect it so not not too easy it's kind of a pain in the neck but that's what I had to do the other thing that I don't have on here is a way to fuel it up without taking this off and basically fueling it from here. I didn't want to add a bunch of weight to get the, um, for like a fueling, like a little valve or anything on here. So I'm basically just going to be fueling from here. So it's a little bit of a pain to take it off, but we'll see how it works. Again, this was just sort of a fun kit modification. Um, there's the tank. It's a two ounce tank. Again, it's a pretty small tank for this engine, so I may not be able to get that long of a flight out of it. And I had to remind myself that we're at the bottom because the plane, because the um, engine is upside down, and um, so had to put the make sure that I didn't put the the fuel tank in wrong. And so that's the area in the front. And so the other modification was the tail wheel, um, steerable tail wheel and rudder. So I have a I have my servo right here. That's not a good shot, but there's the servo for the rudder and the tail wheel was just a simple construction i just used um, the, the piano wire and i brought it through the rear part of the fuselage using a little conduit i used a piece of control rod um there we go piece of control rod that comes in the focus i'm not sure and just cut a, a length of it and i fed it through and then i connected it um to the rudder so the so the the little control rod basically acted like a little just like a little conduit and then then the wire was bent over the you know, there it is you can see the how the wire bends over and connects into the to the rudder itself so i had to do this in some in a couple steps um, if i ever have to change this thing out i can't do it unless i probably take the rudder apart so it's not something that's very accessible but basically basically there it is it's just a yeah let me do it from over here it's basically just the the wire comes up it goes through and then it bends over in that direction and then i just fed that into another piece of control um, control rod tubing so that it just moves freely so as the rudder moves back and forth it just brings the <coughs> it brings the the tail wheel with it so it's simple construction it's that's basically how they do it on a lot of airplanes i didn't vent anything here but um that's how i modified this to work and uh, hopefully it'll work work well all right, well, here's the um, new box with all the parts ready to be built. 
I used a 2 by 4 foot acoustic ceiling panel as the base of the plans. Um, this is good if you want to use pins to hold down the parts while you do the construction. I covered the plans with parchment paper. You can also use wax paper. Um, this is a good method to keep the plans clean and if any glue drips down um, from a wood piece onto the plan set, you'll protect it. Um, as you pull the wood off, you won't, you won't tear the plans. You could tear the wax paper or the parchment paper, but that's easily replaceable. For adhesives, I just used a common wood glue and a couple different types of CA glue, um, both thin and thick. I think I even used a gel. Um, for stronger bonds, I used a 5-minute epoxy. And then there is some fiberglass work that has to be done, so I did use an epoxy resin for that, which we'll see later on. I like to use a self-healing um, cutting pad to help protect the plans and also the work surface. This one's small enough so I can move it around and use it as needed. To start construction of the fuselage, the sides are reinforced with balsa and plywood sheeting. The fuselage is sort of a simple box structure with only a few bulkheads and sheeting on the sides and on the top. There are some doublers, some balsa doublers up near the cowl, and this is just to thicken it up enough so that you can go back and sand everything down to give it the curves that are needed um, for the finished um, shape. Here you can see all of the doublers up in the cowl area, which will be sanded down later to give us the shape. And then this is just the nut assembly where the wing attaches to the fuselage. In order to get the OS-10 with its engine mount to fit where the 049 was, I had to move the firewall back I mean, a little over an inch or so. Um, this is not, was not a um, real big deal, but then I just had to cut another piece, um, using a piece of quarter inch plywood, cut another firewall to fit in the right location. The OS-10 took up a lot more room than the 049 engine. In order to get it to fit, I had to remove a bunch of wood up on the front end. Um, I had to remove the inner, a lot of the inner balsa doublers and ho really hollowed out the cowl area. This picture also shows the plywood spinner ring and the new plywood firewall. Here's the firewall with the engine mount attached just for a trial run. And then here's the spinner ring um, being epoxied onto the front end of the cowl. Surprisingly, it took a lot more effort than I thought it would to get everything lined up properly, but finally I got the engine mount located in the right position. The cockpit and the turtle deck was constructed separately, and then it was attached to the top of the fuselage. To give the rounded shape of the cockpit, um, black cardstock supplied with the kit was cut and then glued on top of the balsa formers. After the glue dried on the cardstock, I painted the whole thing black, and the kit also supplied instrument panels that you can glue to the front and rear cockpit. This picture also shows the cowl area with the attached balsa blocks that later will be sanded and carved to the proper shape. Because the canopy is glued down on top of the cockpit, there's no way to open it up later, so you have to install the pilots first. I chose a pair of 1 8 scale military pilots from Williams Brothers. These seemed to fit the best. The pilots were assembled using plastic model glue and some seam filler. Um, I finished the pilots using um, enamel paints. I didn't do a lot of research in terms of the color scheme, but I just chose colors that looked okay to me, and I think they came out all right. Because the canopy is permanently glued to the cockpit, I wanted to make sure the pilots could not become detached. So for a strong bond, I used epoxy and I drilled holes in the bases of the pilots and also in the base of the cockpit. And here are the pilots glued down to the cockpit assembly. And then here's a view of looking forward at the um, instrument panels. So as noted before, the canopy and the turtle deck is one piece of molded plastic and that had to be epoxied down on top of the cockpit assembly as shown here and it was just pinned down to the work surface until it cured and then the edges had to be trimmed and then it was um, fit on top of the fuselage and then epoxy down on top of the fuselage. This isn't the best picture 
but it shows you the canopy and the turtle deck assembly. And then I covered the canopy with um, tape just to protect it from getting scratched um, during later steps. Like the upper canopy portion, the lower canopy block was carved out of a solid um, rectangular piece of balsa wood. It's designed to be removed so that you can access the engine and the fuel tank. It attaches to the fuselage using two small dowels at the back which attach to a bulkhead and then a small screw that attaches to, the, um, to a nut assembly in the bulkhead right behind the engine. A lot of wood had to be removed in order to make room for the engine and also the exit locations for the muffler and the needle valve. And then I coated the whole thing, or at least the inside, with an epoxy resin to help protect it just from you know fuel soaking in over the over time. For the pressure tube coming off of the muffler, I just drilled a small hole and then I created a small channel to sort of feed it through, and it just kind of bends over and then follows the contour of the cow, and that just finished it up nicely. Obviously, fast forward a little bit because this is the finished plane, but this just this just shows the cowl area with the lower block and then how the pressure tube is fed through the lower block and connects to the muffler. Okay, well, um, that's it for now for the fuselage. Um, next time, we're going to talk about constructing the wing. And until then, thank you for watching my channel. I'm James, this is On Hobbies, and we'll see you next time.